Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher from Spirit Lab Television. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, my partners and friends across Canada. We value your friendship and your support. We couldn't do this without you, so you're very special to us. And we've been praying for you. We believe in God for all of your needs. And every time we think of you, just like Paul said, we say, thank God for you. And we pray for you. We're believing God's best for you. And after the program, at the end, we're going to pray with you before we cut out. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to be right back. You know, whatever you're doing in life, whatever kind of occupation you're in right now, whatever project you might be doing, the Lord says you can be weary. If something happens and you fall, you discover that you're not as spiritual as you are. Patience is a virtue that the world devalues today. We have been taught to have things much quickly in this life. Being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. I'm talking about negative things that's going on. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Friendly enough, so I can talk, look to you. Okay, so having patience means that you'll stand unwaveringly without weakening, but moving ahead on, at, a, at a steady pace. So having patience means you will stand unwaveringly, that's, that's without a doubt, without weakening. You're not going to get weaker, you're just going to stay the same, you're going to endure, you're going to move ahead, move ahead at a steady pace. And you know you're on the right track. You know, it's wonderful to know that you're on the right track because when you're, on the right, when you're walking with God in His will, then you're not going to try to disturb what you have to make, it, to make things like, you know, to make it go quicker. So A, number one, A means, uh, patience means that you're going uh, you're you're to be able to abide under pressure because when, you, when you're patient, the devil's going to come and push you to make a change. But if you're patient... And you know when you're with God, then you're not going to be able to, the devil's not going to pressure you. That's why it says, count it all joy, brothers, when you come up to diverse temptations and trials. The word, temp, the word temptations is, uh, is the word pressure in the Greek. Count it all joy, my brother, when you come up under diverse temptations. The word temptations in that verse of Christopher, one of the words meaning, the meaning of it is uh, parosmos in the Greek, which means to put pressure on you. So that you're going to change your mind and you're going to jump ahead and make a change. But when you know you're stepping on, standing on God's word, you're not going to change it. You're going to continue to go on and never, never mind the situation that is changing all around you, but you're going to stay the same with God all the time. Isn't that, that's pretty good teaching. We can go home right now and say, praise God, I learned something. Huh? B, patient means that you're going to be persistent and are able to persevere no matter what happens in your life. You know, uh, I've talked to different mentors. I've had different mentors. It's, it's important for you to have a mentor. A mentor is somebody who you can talk to, somebody who you respect and sit down. And, and, and very often than not, most people don't have a mentor, but they have uh, videotapes and books and things on, online where they go to and they can look at that. And you don't have to have a mentor that's face-to-face -face with you all the time. You can, you can be mentored by Joyce Meyer if you're a, a, a woman, or you could be a man too, I guess. Uh, you know, if you follow somebody like that, or, or somebody you respect, and read their material, you become like who you read after. You know, I like Brother Higgin, and, and I've learned a lot from him, you know, to love people, to be patient with people, and I wish I could be more patient, but, you know, I'm learning. You know, I didn't become this great 
all in one day. It took me a while <laughs> to become just wonderful and lovely. You know, you can tell I love myself, right? Really, really love. And I'm really humble too. So, so in C, uh, being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances because circumstances will come. Being patient means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. I'm talking about negative things that's going on that want to make you change your mind about things. You know, uh, I think about different things. You know, I told myself, self, listen, you know, <laughs> talking to me, you know. So it's like, I remember thinking about school. I said, okay, if I go to school, I'll be this, this old. When I finish this, I don't want to be that old when I'm finished this. And I'm thinking about this now. I'm thinking, still thinking about school. They said, you know what, Roma? No matter what, you'll be that old anyway in four years. So go ahead and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so it's not going to make a difference. You're going to be in four years. How old are you going to be? And no matter what happens, you're still going to be that same age. So time is going to come and... You know, you, you can look at your own life and you look at things like, you know, I should have had a nice savings account when I was 16 years old. I should have had, you know, diff, different things. I could have put away money. I could have been a millionaire by the time I was 30 <laughs> if I could have put some money away. Right? You can put money away. If you can put money away. So let's go to D. Because So we had A. Patience means to, bite, to be able to bite under pressure. B, it means to be persistent and to be able to persevere. C, it means the quality of not surrendering to circumstances. And D, it means the quality of not to succumb to under, uh, under any kind of trial. Don't let trials beat you and quit. It, 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 anybody can quit. You can quit anytime, anything, any anytime. Just go ahead and quit. But it takes time. It takes some, some kind of a person who thinks and stops and says, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to quit. This is good for me. I'm going to continue on. So what happens, you know, here's something that we look at all the time. Go to Mark 11, 23 to verse 26. Let's go look at Mark chapter uh, 11, verse 23 to 26. And I'm going to read the King James Bible. I want to show you something here that's very critical in your life because when you believe in God and you pray for something, uh, if you have a prayer project and you're, and you're praying for something, you start believing God, you get a promise of God, you find that promise of God, maybe you write it down or circle it around in your Bible and you look at it regularly and you look at it and you read it, maybe you write it down and you try to memorize the scripture and you begin to think about it and, you, and then you pray about it and ask God, whatever, whatever it is. He said, Lord, I'm, I'm believing God for this promise. You said in your word, and I'm receiving that by faith right now. And so, Lord, I'm accepting it right now that what I'm asking you is according to your word. It's your will. So I receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. He said, "Woo, thank you, Lord. But then, circumstances change and tells you that you can't have that. Things, your life changes. But you prayed that prayer. Now, now, the trial that you're experiencing is going to it's going to tell you to deter and, and to to quit and not, you know, uh, believe for that promise. But you did pray. For, you did pray for that prayer. There's a lot of people, perhaps even in this room right now, who prayed a lot of prayers when they thought they were believing or when they thought they were using faith, but they didn't use faith. Yes, they found the scripture. Yes, they prayed the prayer, but it wasn't faith yet. It was just mental assent, or just the fact that just, oh, I agree the Bible is true, and there it is, but it's not really faith yet. So it takes time. So when, when the trouble comes, they begin to change their mind about something. Go to Mark eleven twenty three. We're talking about patience. We need patience. We need to endure to the end. We need to take Take what, have what it takes to, to move to the end and where we got the promise of God in our lives. This is not a joy service right now, at this moment, <laughs> as you can tell. But we're going to get there and practice a little bit. <clears throat> Did you find uh, Mark eleven twenty three? 23? Okay, it says, For verily I say to you, Jesus, Jesus talking to his disciples, 
that whosoever, whosoever, and, and we qualify because we're a whosoever, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, he didn't say that if a Christian does it. I found that people who are not Christians are actually doing this. Brother Hagin talked about a lawyer who was not a born-again believer. He believed God. The, the doctor told him, you're going to die in 30 to 90 days if you don't have this operation. And so somehow his mom convinced him to go to Ramah. He sat under Brother Hagin for, for, for a healing school. And he, and he heard Brother Hagin talk about this verse of Scripture. He said, oh, I can believe that. I, I can believe that. So he began to believe that he received his healing. And he's not a believer. Did you ever notice that people in the, in the, new, in the, in the four Gospels that got healed, they weren't born again Christians? How many people know that? They were not saved, but they believed. And so they, by faith, was able to believe. The woman with issue of blood, she was not born again. The ten lepers were not saved. Huh? The, the uh, centurion, you know, the centurion's son wasn't born again, neither was the centurion. And he believed God. So we see businessmen who take this and they believe something. The other day I was watching uh, on Netflix a doc documentary. I went to documentaries and I watched a, a man who had a con concept of building this idea about a, a, about, um, a record company or a music industry. He, he had this in mind. So he learned all his techniques about becoming a pioneer in, in music, a producer, and he, watched, he, he learned his techniques working in an uh, assembly, assembly line in the Ford Motor Company in Detroit. He's seen all the specialties of how they build this, this machine or this car and, he, and the different departments, how it works. So he had a concept, this is how I'm going to build this record company. I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that, I'm going to have that. And he built what they called Motown. I don't know if anybody, no one got excited, but yeah. <laughs> I thought they'd be jumping upside down, grabbing the chairs, biting the back of the chair. But <laughs> everybody's excited about that. But anyway, so he, he, made this, he made this industry, and he believed, he believed he could do this. So if you can have a concept, there's people who are not born again Christians, they're not uh, people who go to church, but they have a concept, uh, uh, you know, like a business concept, and they, they begin to see this thing in their mind, and they conceptualize it, and they, they, they begin to believe this. You know, you believe, uh, a man can believe a lot of things, sometimes uh, not so much good things. So verily I say to you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. You got to talk against the thing that you're facing. You're going to tell it, you know, you're not going to stay there very long. There's a guy that, that we know that, that at Ramah, he was in a prison. He, he was serving three, three life sentences for, for murder and different things. He's serving, serving. He's in prison. And he, he got born again in prison. Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher. We're, we're Spirit Alive, and we want to. Thank you for being our partner, friends, and being a viewer. If you're a brand new viewer, you want to contact with us, you can call us at any time. Uh, the numbers are on your screen right there. And also, you can go to our website at spiritlive.org and find us there and watch out what we're doing and find out more information. We want to hear from all our friends and partners across Canada. And if you haven't been a partner, we'd like to team up with you and believe God's best for you and, and teach you and Give you the word of God weekly. So stay tuned after the program. We want to pray with you. Hi, my name's Kelly, and I just wanted to share with you a testimony that um, in 2013, I was diagnosed with lupus, and I went through a really hard time. I'd lost all my hair and it was just not great, but 
through this ministry of Faith City Church and Spirit Alive, I was taught the word of faith and I was able to overcome and gain the victory. We thank God for you, our partners and friends. We encourage our viewers to share with us how Spirit Alive is helping you. Please write us or call us. We are believing God with you. Pastor Roma and Anita are celebrating 30 years in ministry this fall. To mark this occasion, we'd like to offer you Pastor Roma's autobiography, My Name is Roma, for a donation of $30. This book outlines Pastor Roma's journey from a life of poverty, addiction, and chaos to a life dedicated to God. You'll learn about his supernatural call to ministry and God's plan for Faith City Church and Spirit Alive. We also encourage you to send Pastor Roma and Anita a personal greeting to mark their 30-year ministry milestone. To receive a copy of My Name is Roma, you can contact our helpline at 807-344-1956 or email us at spiritalive at tbaytel.net. You also can call the helpline counselors during the broadcast times. Helpline counselors are available from 9.30 to 10.30 and 3 to 4 p.m. every Sunday. We look forward to hearing from you, your support in helping us share the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. And he, he got born again in prison. And he's there in prison. And he went to this uh, Bible study, and Kenneth Hagin Ministries came in there. And he, he found this book, and he, he learned about Mark 11, 23, 24. And what he did, he began to confess this. He said, you know, I'm going to get out of here. He said, you can't get out of here. You're, you're serving three life sentences. That's 60 years. You'll never get out of here. And he said, every day I, I walk by on the court and I point at that door. He says, I'm going to walk out of this place. I'm going to walk out of you. He said, he would say that. And one day he said, uh, I'm going to speed up the story a little bit. <laughs> Speed it up just a little bit. <laughs> and so he came to this place. They asked, they said to him, we want to talk to you. We have received a forgiveness pardon for you. What? They're going to be releasing you from jail, so you're going to have to get ready for your exit. And he's out, he's out today. He's a full-time minister. He travels around, around. He's got a plane. He travels everywhere teaching people about the Word of God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. And there's things that I've done. I pointed at different things, institutions, that says, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. In fact, I walked around here. I lived over here for a number of years. There was triple X video uh, places of here. There was, video, there was one actually down my street. And I was, ooh, you know, looking over there. So I said, I curse this thing in the name of Jesus. You will not, you will not be here. And within, within that year, it was gone. So I don't want to come by your house. <laughs> you know, you tell this thing, you're not going to be there anymore. So you shall have what you say. So here, uh, you speak to this mountain. You got to speak to it, not talk about it, how big it is, but speak to it that it's going to be removed. He says, and shall be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things what he said, in other words, you have to believe what you say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray? Believe. Believe what? Believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. In other words, 
You have to understand about faith before you learn how to pray. Before you pray, utter the word. That's why I'm saying there's people here who have uttered, they prayed, but they've never prayed in faith. They thought they prayed in faith. So when something's happening in your life, you're, at, you're praying, you're, you're, you're believing God for something, and you, and, you, and you pray a prayer, and sometimes you, you're praying something that, you know, you, is, you know you're, you, maybe you're praying too early because you didn't believe yet. There's people, there's people like that. They, they prayed for different things. It didn't, it didn't uh, pan out the way they thought it would be. So let's just stop right there for a second. I'm not going to go to verse 26. I'll go to, so often people pray for something, and when things don't change almost immediately, they give up. Remember what our text said? He that endures to the end. He that endures to the end. Sometimes you're going to have, when the time you pray, the Bible says, believe when you pray. When you pray, the moment you pray, believe, you receive. That means if you're praying, at the moment you're praying for healing, at the moment you're praying for the money, the moment you're praying for different things, you're going to have to believe that you receive. That's, a, that's the moment. But if you don't, if I ask you, did you receive? You say, well, I hope so. Then you didn't pray the prayer of faith. You have to believe you receive. That's what Jesus said. You know how many thousands of people are disappointed because this didn't work? It wasn't because the Bible didn't work. It was because they didn't work the Bible. It says, therefore, I say unto you, what things ever you desire, when you pray, when you pray or the moment you pray, what do you do? You believe, you receive. In other words, you've got to believe that you receive something when you don't have it yet. That's what believing is about. You don't have it, but you're believing it. Where you, where do you believe you receive? Where, you believe, where, where did you receive it? Well, in my heart. I believe I receive in my heart. You don't look to your body for a confirmation. You don't ask a doctor for confirmation because you'll get give you more medication. You have to believe right now. Still take the medication, of course. And still do whatever, because you might die before actually the process happens in your body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you have to still believe. So I remember when I was in school, I was going to go to school, my fourth year of university. Uh, I hadn't applied. Most of all my friends applied six months before they graduated, but I didn't. And uh, I don't know why I didn't. Uh, and I was going to church over here at, at our church. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, everybody was saying, oh, I, I went. I, most people that applied for schools applied to at least three schools because you have to apply at least three. So in case you didn't get this one, you didn't get the other one. Go to a different school. So I said, no, I'm going to apply to one school. I'm going, I'm going over here. I'm going to University of Manitoba. And, uh, and it's a big competition to get in certain programs, right? I said, I'm going there. So I applied a little bit later, and I said, I told people, I'm going to this school. That's where I'm going. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do that, and I applied for some money, and the, and the Ontario government uh, handed me a check. It was 19, I think, 98. They sent me down there and said, uh, uh, we're going to give you 10,000 bucks, but you have to come back and work for the Ontario government. So they gave me 10 grand, plus I had money to, to go to school. Thank you for watching the program. I believe right now if we stand in agreement in prayer, that God will answer your prayer. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 12, that God's ears are listening for your prayer. He's looking down. The Bible says his eyes are over the righteous and his ears are unto his, open unto their prayers. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done to my Father which is in heaven. I believe if you find the word of God, the Bible promise, and stand on it, if two shall agree, it will be done of them, my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said that. So we trust him. He said all things are possible to him that believes. So believing means that you're trusting him. You're expecting God to do something on your behalf because you're counting on it because of what he said in his word. So let's agree together for your need. I believe in the name of Jesus, Father, all my partners that are believing God for physical healing. The Bible says in Matthew 8, 17, that himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You said in your word in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 and 13 that we can thank you because you have delivered us from the power of darkness. That deliverance is available for every person. I thank you, Lord God. You said in the 23rd Psalm 
that the Lord is my shepherd, that he will feed and he will lead and he will guide me and protect me. So I want to thank you for protection and strength for everyone that you said that you would give strength to all those that are asking for strength according to your word. You said in your word that you'll supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Thank you, Lord God, that we can overcome every single situation according to your word. He said, I can uh, overcome all things by Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that's sick in their physical body, that every sickness and every disease is a curse of the law, according to your word in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61, that sickness is a curse. Healing is a blessing. You said in your word, in Galatians 3.13, that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Sickness, according to the word of God, is a curse, but healing is a blessing. So I want to thank you. I covenant in agreement with my partners and friends that healing belongs to them. I pray, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be delivered from drugs, from alcohol, from any demonic attacks. I pray protection over that people. I, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. That protection belongs to them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Those of you that have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is the time right now to come to Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He, sent, he was sent to this world to be the savior of the world. If you receive that gift today, you will be saved. Say this prayer after me if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or savior of your life. Say this, dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I believe he's your son. I believe he's the savior of the world. And today I invite him to my life to come into my life to save me because I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me whole. And today, I make him the Lord of my life to direct me all the days of my life. I will follow him for the rest of my days. I thank you for my salvation today. In Jesus' name, I am now born again. If you've prayed that prayer, you are now saved. Welcome to the family of God. And if you've never, if you've been away from God, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I acknowledge my sins. I acknowledge my ways. Forgive me for all my sins. I'm coming back to you. I submit my life to you. I resubmit my life. I rededicate my life to you right now. I'm coming home in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've done that, you have been rededicated. You're well on your way back. I believe that God has done it. So call us or write to us or give us a note or send us some messages or so that we can celebrate with you. We want to send you a package and help you grow in your spiritual walk. Remember, we'll be back again next time. We'll see you on Spirit Alive. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.